And we are here. Tomorrow is today. This is the day for the group Whoa. stages. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they will have to fight um, against themselves in the, in the groups overall. But we've seen a lot of players that actually got eliminated. We've seen Purse, we've seen AK Wonder uh, talking about the tournament. And uh, they enjoy it. And they today, there are side events. So they will be able to still continue playing. And I think it's great because you come, you fly to UK uh, for a free day event. And if you get eliminated in the one, you are able to continue and have fun because this is Insomnia. This is a big LAN event. Yeah, this is an amazing format because not only does Swiss guarantee you, you know, a long tournament format, even if you're unsuccessful, you can still keep playing games of Hearthstone, fight for a good record, even if you go 0 2 early or whatever. But the, the redemption side event is such a big deal as well because, you know, the, the expected value of this tournament is quite low with, you know, only 16 people going through, 103 solid players in the bracket. So having this second chance tournament today that all the eliminated players will take place in is such an awesome initiative as well. Absolutely. But I just cannot wait to, sh to show everybody the groups. So let's show Group A and let's talk about who is there and what's happening. Raven. Yeah, so Group A, we do have Model Leper, Pekrovac, Two Bears and Powder. And as we can see there, that Pekrovac actually won his first match versus Modern Leper. So what we're going to be showing on stream are all the deciding matches as to who goes through uh, to the top eight. So we are going to see Pekrovac and versus Powder, and then off stream, Modern Leper and Two Bears are going to play, and then we'll see the next match to follow up later on. So a uh, really strong group, you know, Modern Leper, good, you know, the, the, one of the UK representatives in here, but against a pretty stacked lineup as well. We saw Pekrovac from the European Winter Championship to a really strong performance. Two Bears coming off the back of his uh, arena performance <laughs> as well. And then uh, Powder, you know, a big name in SK, already had some great results this year. So uh, really cool group. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Sol, do you have anything to add about this group? Uh, it's just a really exciting group. You know, I'm personally rooting for Two Bears because um, I love seeing new talent come into Hearthstone and he's in a great opportunity now to capitalize on his exposure with the arena thing. So really excited about it. But we see Group B now, which is Ness, the other UK representative. So of course, the, the first seeds in each group will be the person who finished first, second, third, and fourth in the Swiss. That's how it filters out. And he's joined by one of those flow players, Johnny Stone, who is uh, primarily an ex-poker player, I yeah. believe, who's now moved into Hearthstone. Uh, Archon Zalay, one of the few NA representat representatives, which have to give credit to NA. They didn't send too many players over here, but I think two out of three of the representatives made it through to top Both 16. Dog and Zalay. Dog and Zalay with only Firebat missing out. Um, and of course, the defending champion, RDU. G2 RDU, is uh, rounding out the bracket there. So again, just another stack looking group. Yeah, a very cool group. And let's uh, look at Group C, because uh, that's a very interesting group that's uh, stacked. Ignite, Super JJ, Dog, and Life Coach. If that's not the group of death, I don't know what is. Yeah, group of death is a, is a cliche that gets thrown around, but if it was ever appropriate for anything, it's this right here. That is, um, that is some serious major titles in that group. And Ignite, no slouch himself, despite not having one of those big major wins to his name. So incredibly tough group, but it's just the way the seeding worked out in the end, because it was done on the numbers from the qualification. Yeah, and I think what's really interesting as well is if you got given that group just just to look at in a vacuum, you'd say, okay, maybe on paper Ignite's the, the, you know, like the underdog here. But Ignite actually had the best record out of all these right. guys through yeah. the Swiss. So the it's like seed, yeah. he, he's coming here on his game. So it, like you said, it's just easily the group of death and it's going to be some crazy games coming out of those guys. Absolutely. And uh, at this point, we can also see that uh, the players from Flow and players from G2 actually got spread out. Yeah. It's, um, well, it was not rigged. But they, I, I think they just got lucky with their standings and uh, yeah. with the match. I think the G2 players literally finished like 7, 8, 9 or something yeah. in the Swiss. So yeah. yeah, they just literally they got spread out through two, three consecutive groups. So and that's always good because you don't have to play versus your te teammates in the group stage. Right. Uh, it's possible to get out of the group if your teammate is still there, mm -hmm. but it's uh, more likely that you actually have to eliminate him at some point. And uh, coming to group D, the last group, uh, we will have Tice in that group. Tice is there, and some matches are being played already, I can see, right? Yeah, so uh, it looks like uh, Kamlin actually beat 6-0, which is a pretty big win for him. Um, wow, let's talk about Kamlin, actually. Right. What, what do you guys know about Kamlin? Uh, Kamlin is a name I've seen around in uh, online tournament circuit, and he also um, qualified for... Yeah, it was the European WCA. That's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's, he's a name that I'm familiar with. He was played a few games in this tournament under a different name, and I was kind of pretty sure I recognized the guy. He's like, yeah, you're Kamlin, right? 
Um, but he, I think, mentioned to, to, to us beforehand that he lost to 6-0 in the Swiss for, uh, bracket of this. So he was looking for the revenge game here, got his wish, and he's able to uh, pick up the win where it really matters. And he's now in a great position against G2 Tice in the, in the winner's bracket. He's also a big streamer in Germany. He streams um, exclusively in German, so he's probably like one of the biggest German streamers. Uh, but yeah, he got the revenge on 6-0. And then in the group, we have uh, Penny and Tice. And uh, Penny um, also told me that she lost to Tice and she really wanted to play against him and take revenge. But um, it proved to be difficult. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tice is a difficult opponent at the best of times. But yeah, it's, so these these games are free to be played as, as and when the players are available, basically, because only the qualification games are what we're going to see on stream. So we will see that game of Camlan versus Tice on stream, and then we'll see the loser of that against whoever goes all the way through the lower bracket. Yeah, I hope Penny actually makes it to the stream match, because she mentioned that she also wants to uh, play 6-0, just to try herself versus 6-0 and, and possibly okay. win versus that great player that 6-0 is. Uh, but if she loses, we will not show her on stream. Yeah, if she wins, she might get another match versus Tice if uh, Tice loses. So uh, just yeah. get one more go at it and try and get that win versus him. Yeah, so those are our groups. And um, as, as you guys mentioned, we will be showing only the matches where the player actually advances to top eight. So that tomorrow when we have uh, top eight for single elimination, we will know all the players that got there. And uh, just to remind all of you, it's a 30,000 tournament and uh, we have amazing prizes overall. Do you guys remember the price, the price split? Uh, off the top of my head, I do not know. I'm not sure exactly how it's broken down. I can I quickly check. Ten, it's 10,000 for first, right? Yeah, it's 10,000 for first and 15 uh, preliminary points. Yep. Then uh, 5K for the second and 10 points, 2,500 uh, for the third and fourth. And uh, all of the top 16 players are already guaranteed $625. Nice. Not bad for a day's work yesterday, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, okay, so the first match is going to be Powder versus Pokrovac. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about those guys specifically? I mean, Pokrovac is a guy that if you watch the, the Hearthstone Championship Tour coverage over the, the last week or so, you will have been familiar with. We got to know him a bit there. Obviously, a uh, bit of a prodigy, very young guy, but been playing card games for an insane amount of time. I think 15 years old and he's been playing for 10 years or something like that, or 16 yeah. years yeah, old and he's been playing, playing, playing when he was six. Yeah, right, so yeah, ten, early. 10 years <laughs> of card game experience still as a teenager, so he's actually a wily veteran in this kind of bracket, which is crazy, and obviously Powder, just a, a huge name overall as well. Yeah, Powder's just uh, been one of the steady names throughout the whole of Hearthstone's history, actually. He's always been around and like consistently put in good performances, but also has maybe a bit of a habit of uh, finishing second place, uh, you know, not quite finishing up and getting that first place championship. The final boss. Yeah, exactly. And uh, let's talk about our lineups a bit. So we see Shaman from Powder. Um, yes. This is the Eski Shaman, possibly, like we've seen yesterday. I would highly expect it to be, yeah. So Pilot the Shredder, uh, Flame Tomb Totem. Gilbert Stalker. Gilbert Stalker. Yep. Yeah. Um, it was very successful him in his first round. He 3 0 in that match in his first group game with uh, with Agro Shaman, as he mentioned to me. And it's been a deck that we've seen sweeping a lot. Obviously, we talked about Ignite's record when he came on. He was at 1.11 and 0 with, with Agro Shaman. So it's a deck that people have been bringing to tournaments a lot recently, but it's actually been performing pretty poorly in the outings that we've seen it um, in the recent Blizzard events, for example. It had a very poor showing, but this week here at Insomnia, it's performing incredibly well overall. Yeah, and something just to mention as well that I don't think we've quite covered yet is all the guys who uh, and girl of course who made it through from yesterday could change decks if they right. wanted to so yeah. they didn't have to stick with the three decks that uh, they took to Swiss they could if they wanted to but they could have made changes or even just changes to cards within those decks as well so we're going to see completely uh, you know like a fresh set of decks uh, although you know we did see the Agro Shaman for example from Powder yesterday and speaking of which that is what he's going to start with. Yeah, hey, if, you, also if you 3 0 do you, you, yeah, you why not? pick up where you left off, right? Yeah. yeah, definitely. It worked for him before, but it's worth mentioning that they will not be able to change the decks for tomorrow. So yes. yeah. today they had to make a conscious decision for the group stages and also the single elimination top eight with their deck choices. Right, so looking at the opening hands here, uh, Pokrovac does have that wild growth, but it's not kind of the preferred ramp card against these really aggressive decks. You really want to hit those innovates, wild growth, wraths, these kind of cards. Uh, looking over at Powder's side, Tunnel Trog, Coin, Feral Spirit, yeah. seems good, let's go. Like a dream. Yeah, Yeah, and the problem as well is, is not, uh, Pokrovac's currently not even got like a wrath or something. Right. Because even, even that can be okay just to stop the Tunnel Trog going crazy. And uh, this hand's just getting progressively better as it moves on. Yeah, I had a conversation with Powder beforehand about him including Flame Tongue Totem. Um, Agro Shaman is a deck that I've messed around with a lot, and I was asking him about his opinions and justification for Flame Tongue Totem in the deck. And he said, I've won so many games by just playing 
playing a one drop and then playing flame tongue totem and then playing uh feral spirit which is exactly what his opening hand is right now absolutely but this opening is interesting so like we've discussed that trog coin feral spirit is the dream opening yeah but uh, he decided to coin totem golem why is that uh, i mean it potentially plays around a wrath from his opponent it also punishes um well, actually, it, it doesn't punish Wild Growth that much harder because you will just get to coin Feral Spirits and hit for three on the following turn anyway, but it does take away the potential turn two of the Wrath just sniping down the uh, the Tunnel Trog. Yeah, and it's also still pretty safe because that, uh, that Tom Golem's not going anywhere, and if there's any removal, you'd imagine it would aim it that way. Um, so it's been able to go into a turn two Tunnel Trog, and it can still follow up with uh, the Feral Spirit if he really wants. Yeah, the Feral Spirit is uh, going to be interesting here because it does immediately activate that Mind Control tech that we see in hand from Pokrovac. But honestly, Mind Control tech, unless it steals one of the taunts to slow this down, he probably just ends up getting uh, too much damage push, but he does get one of the taunts here yeah. and now has a pretty solid looking board. I think it's actually huge for Pokrovac because this matchup overall is quite difficult for the Druid if you uh, don't get the Innervate Keeper of the Grove, the things you've mentioned. Oh. But the Wild Grove into what he got just now. The, the Lepinome's huge here because it means now we can Earth Shock that Shredder and just remove it. He doesn't have to worry about what comes out of it. It's just going to snipe it off. Uh, he can kill both minions and still fill out his curve with a Lepinome. So, Although he has other plays, of course, I feel like you cannot pass up the chance of a shock in a... Uh, I will say, I mean, we see Ancient of War in Pokrovac's hand, so if Powder's done his homework on what Pokrovac was playing yesterday, assuming he was playing Druid then as well, he might consider that he needs the Earth Shock for those huge taunts later on, but as you said, that Piloted Shredder is such a juicy target as a 4-1 for the Earth Shock. So uh, and also as well, the, the idea it. might be that this play opens up more damage, which right. by the time Ancient of War comes out, that's when you draw into your spells, and then you don't care about taunt. Yep. Yeah, like absolutely. It. And this is the strategy, basically, just deal as much damage as possible and with your minions and then finish the game with spells. Yep, and this could be pretty nice as well because he can actually, uh, it'll be two, four, he can run in the Lepinome and then play the Argent, Argent Horse, Horse Rider Rider. and the Flame Tongue and then gain the extra damage and then just kill it off whilst the Divine Shield soaks up the yeah. hit so he still has the minion on board. And still connect to face with the five damage totem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's ramping up, and uh, there's a there's a decent board developing here, a Flame Tongue Totem that will have to go unanswered if Pokrovac wants to spend his entire turn on a 7-drop as well. So uh, the decision to just make the push on the previous turn does look like it's paying out so far, but he does just have minions and melee damage in his hand right now, so Taunt is going to be a big wall. Yeah, the problem here is if he does go for the Ancient of War, that's you know, a good play, you put a big Taunt wall up, but because you've not removed the Flame Tongue yeah. Totem, that's 9 damage, he needs 1 damage to just kill this Taunt anyway, so... And Rockbite is definitely going to help with that. Yeah, and he has this uh, Argent Horse Rider as well. So a pretty good situation for Powder. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like you just play Flame Juggler here. If it hits and you get that one damage, then that's perfect because yeah. you can max out on the damage that goes face afterwards. Cool. He does get it. Big roll for him. That opens up a lot more damage potential to face now. So what's the play then? Do you just kill it with... Uh... I mean, so the consideration here for Powder is the implications of Swipe. So he could play the new Argent Horse Rider next to the Flame Tongue Totem and then use the Divine Shield and the Totem Golem to trade through, which would leave him with uh, more of a board presence, but it would expose him more to swipe doing it that way. So this is exactly what he's going to do, push the damage with the second Horse Rider, but you know, he, had the, he had the opportunity to just trade off his board and keep a Divine Shielded Horse Rider on the board, which would have been more protection, but he's going to go ahead and say, if you, have, if you have swipe here, not a big deal. I also think as well, because we've seen very, very few spells right. from Powder, you swiftly get to the point where I'm probably just going to top deck a Crackle or a Lava Burst or something, Thing in which again you know you just get the damage in while you can and then follow it up afterwards so even through swipe he has three from the rock buyer as long as the taunt doesn't come up and then potentially you know way more damage from the uh, yeah the, the next draw anyway and even with the swipe there's like swipe is not doing that much it will be able to deal with uh, with the minions but then there is the rock biter and you can still um easily like maybe draw something to finish the game if there will be ancient of lord to heal it still doesn't affect you that much yep. because uh, the board is still there so uh, a really bad situation for Pokrovac. Like we yeah, it's kind of funny we talk about all the swipes and stuff, and it's actually he has none of this. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he yeah, literally yeah. has, like, what, Keeper of the Grove to kill a minion, and that's it. So we can right. pretty much see that's not going to be enough, which is why he's gone for the air. Uh, it's your Drake, I guess, just to try and see what he can draw. Yeah, but that was that was for sure the decision for Powder on the previous turn. Yeah. Sight unseen, he has to consider swipe. It's one of the most destructive cards for him. But I totally agree with the assessment that this is kind of job done with minions right here because all he needs to do is draw cards like Lava Burst, which yeah. is exactly what came out. He's even going to use it as well. <laughs> yeah, well, he had it uh, anyway with the, just the Rogue Biter. But uh, what do you guys think about the Druid pick for the first game from Pokrovac? I think it's a really solid pick because Druid can actually just sleep as well. 
Um, it can, you know, struggle against, you know, Shaman uh, mainly. But uh, Druid's really good, and in last hero standing, if you can take a deck that's more likely to sweep, you do. You start with that deck. There's no reason to hold it back at all. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as a pick from Poker, uh, from Pokrovac, he's so he's potentially up against the Druid Mirror. He's up against Face Shaman, which is a reasonable matchup for Druid because um, ignoring Druid minions is just a really hard thing to do if they get a fast start. And then he's his the last matchup is potentially Warrior. So the Druid pick just seems like a solid thing, as you said, potential to just three O sweep. And in last hero standing without a ban, that's the primary strategy. Just try and bring decks that can yeah, and, and especially with Druid, you're not holding it to try and snipe anything with this lineup. You just take it because it's good. You know, overall. So yep. you may as well start with it and see what you can do. Makes sense. And now Powder has to stay with the Shaman because it's last year standing. So he keeps the deck that won. And uh, Pokrovac can pick a counter. So he feels like this warrior might be the counter to the, the aggressive Shaman. Yeah, it does hinge on a, a couple of pretty important cards. Armorsmith, uh, generally better as a late game card in this game, honestly, just to get a big whirlwind turn and stack up a bunch of armor. But uh, Ar Armorsmith, early weapons and unstable ghoul are big deals in this matchup in general, as well as just trying to get down patrons as quickly as you can. Yeah, there's even like, what, what do you actually think about the execute here? Because actually like one of the hardest minions for Warrior to deal with fast enough is a Totem Golem, because yep. early on they just can't deal four damage. They have to wait till Death Bite, which is turn four. So I wouldn't even mind like the execute keep maybe i mean there's a lot of other cards you could gain that are better but execute is definitely not terrible to just remove a minion off the board instantly and slow the shaman down yeah so my my general rule as the patron player in this matchup is that i'll keep execute if i have an early minion to play if i have something yeah, to put yeah. on the board then i'll keep the execute because like you said the best execute target in the deck is totem golem and it comes out on turn two so yeah. it's actually a pretty sensible card to have in your hand i wonder with which version is he playing is he playing the corcoran one or the Red Corsair one. Right. There's a, there's a lot of variation, mostly in the four drops in Patron. Piloted Shredder, so Corcoran Elite, Dread Corsair, etc. So um, there's kind of this big pool of just flex cards. There's kind of eight or so cards that can rotate around. Finley's in that mix as well. And the core of the deck is well established, but there's some disagreements yeah, between players. Yeah, you probably want to include so. Patrons. Right. Like yeah, Patrons help. It's a pretty <laughs> core card in yeah. the deck, yeah, so that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Maybe that, Frothing Berserkers if you're feeling crazy, but... Uh, that's two spots locked up. We're nearly there. Just 28 <laughs> more to go and we're good. I heard Death Spite was a good card. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. For now. For now. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to deal with the, the Feral Spirits. It rotates out, so in standard we'll not have Death Spite, but we will have Tentacles for Arms. We will all have Tentacles for Arms, yeah. Um, yeah the less said about that card, the better, I think, overall. <laughs> <laughs> overall, this is actually a, a pretty decent clear up here. You know, he doesn't clear the board completely, but he removes a lot of threats, and also the Whirlwind effect from the Death Spite is going to help out some of the, uh, say, the smaller minions, or to prop the execute as well, so. I wonder how important the double Doomhammer will be. Doomhammer overall good versus Warrior because you just uh, deal consistent damage. And uh, in Patron deck, I would not expect Harrison Jones or right. any weapon removal. So Death Bite should be good to deal damage, but then like, he needs to, to pick the Rock Biter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, generally in this deck, Doomhammer is a, a card that you play two of because you want to draw one. You almost never want to draw the second one unless the game somehow goes really, really long. Um, so that second Doomhammer in hand probably will end up being a bit of a dead draw, but um, just having one in his hand right now, you saw he deliberately did not overload on this turn to make sure he can get that turn five Doomhammer down and start ramping up the damage. Yeah, and as we saw, we just saw Execute, which may as well have read deal one damage right. to a minion. And yep. you know what? That's exactly the right play. You need to just slow the Shaman down and stop all the like the repetitive minion damage, uh, or he will lose very quickly. So good play from Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, interesting decision. Powder immediately queued up the face, but I was going to say, it'd be an interesting decision here because he has the option to play around Battle Rage by removing the Akka light of pain and really denying some of those draws for key cards battle rage is in the hand for pokerbuck powder decides to respect the acolyte and based on the amount of damage built up in his hand right now i don't think he's in the situation where every point of damage needs to yeah. go face right now and but especially not now <laughs> yeah this is one of those odd turns as well where Lotheb, it's really weird when you're playing like Aggro Shaman. Lotheb normally either completely locks out your turn or doesn't change your turn at all. And it's just whether you have minions or a handful yep. of spells. Right. If you find yourself in a position where it's always one or the other, you never have like just a good mix. It's always like, oh my God, I've got all minions where I need spells or the other way around. And this is one of the incredibly frustrating situations against against Agro Shaman because you know you need to race them. You can't just give them infinite turns, especially when they have Doom Hammers equipped, just to keep picking away at you. But when Spell Power Totem gets summoned, you have to respect it. You have to give spend resources to removing it, and that just slows down your race potential so heavily. It's so frustrating. Yep. So he's just gonna try and fill the board. 
and just uh, try and you know, help out with these trades as well as pre pressuring the uh, pressure in the shape. And he just runs, as you said, just, just runs the 5-5. Five, five so tilting. You just have to send five <laughs> damage into a 0-2. Uh, so he has 10 damage here with the Rock Biter. So if, with the Spell Power Totem up, those two Lightning Bolts would have done four each. So that's 18 damage. And then the Crackle, even at a low roll, would have been guaranteed lethal. Yeah. So the respect for the... Um, well, he could have... Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. He would have been one off with yeah, the Rock right, Biter right. to play the Crusader, yeah. Right. Yeah, still pretty pretty scary. Yeah, this deck is really scary overall. And uh, for Patreon, like, Armor Smith has already gone. There's the, the Armor Wrap still, but uh, Lofford being played, so... What can you even do to defend yourself? Like, you need to think about just killing your opponent as fast yeah, as possible. Yeah, I think one of the uh, things Powder needs to think about now is how much he's, he's scared of this fucking Berserker. Because he could, he has the ability to just ignore it. Yeah. Um, but if, you know, if Pokorovac's hand is like, Armor Smith will win, will win, and then things start getting a little bit scary. Oh, this is over, right? Yeah, it's over. he rolled the Spell Power Totem, which means he, he has the lethal here, got it back with the two mana. Obviously, he didn't have the three mana to spend on the <laughs> Horse Rider, <laughs> but the, the Spell Power will do the job. And Pokrovac just the smiles. Yeah, yeah, with, with yeah. a smile, he's like, yes, I know I know what this deck can do. I, I like this. Like, instead of being super salty, Pokrovac is like, yep, this is something I, well, I did expect. Right. And also, this, this might even, like, harken back to his attitude towards card games because he's played them for so long. He understands like it's a card game sometimes this happens and you know what sometimes i do that to other people as well so yeah it's like yeah you just accept it right sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows how aggro works right like yeah. sometimes they draw the nuts and you lose yeah exactly. <laughs> i just uh i'm trying to imagine how powder feels like just he just woke up in the morning and he was like yep i was six over shaman get to top eight easy I mean, he's well on the way. What does he have left in the, for the last matchup? It's Shaman versus uh, yeah, Warlock. the Warlock. Yeah, Warlock. so decent position. You know, Zoo is a, a deck I think slightly favored against the older builds of uh, Agro Shaman. Haven't had a chance to test the effects of things like Gilblin Stalker and uh, possibly Pilot Shredder on the on the matchup. But I imagine having that extra minion base early is something that you definitely want against Zoo, so you can yeah. fight for the board more effectively to set up your damage later on. And this is a pretty solid opening here from Powder. Earthshock, excellent utility card, and then just a handful of minions. Yeah, I think overall, like as you said, Solo, this version is a bit better because suddenly with Flame Tomb Totem, you can use your totems more effectively to trade uh, with what Zoo is um, trying to do against you. But uh, the matchup is good for Zoo overall because Zoo has better tools to trade early with your minions. Yeah. And then you're just like, Zoo will not tap ever almost. Yeah, and also I think uh, like Defender of Argus is going to be like super important here. The second you get a good Defender of Argus down against an Aggro Shaman, as long as you're not actually just dead to spells next turn, you're in a really strong position because they normally can't deal with it that easily. And when they start using their burn to deal with minions, you're just progressively feeling happier and happier about the matchup. And we almost saw one of the most frustrating interactions in all of Hearthstone right there, which is turn one Flame Imp met by turn one Lepanome. Thankfully, he had the one three to come down yeah. to protect it. But one of the reasons why some people have even started to move away from Flame Imp because it, even though it's a one mana 3-2, which is obviously insane stats for one mana, when you look at some of the common other uh, early cards in the meta, Lepanome, Shielded Minibot, it's just mad scientist, such, mad oh, scientist yeah. right, it's just such a terrible trade for the Flame Imp that some people are moving towards things like Argent Squire just to have a stickier presence on it. But the thing is like, it's actually a five life swing, like it's right. only yeah. a one for right. one trade. Yeah, exactly. Five life swing. Yeah. All right, so, uh, Bowder still has um, some good cards here overall. He can go for Feral Spirit, but is there a better way to deal with this board? Uh, I mean, the, the Flame Jugger can, can potentially do some work here. Earthshock also gives you the utility just to get a more favorable trade on the board, and then you can coin out the Feral Spirits, which looks like the play he's going to go for. This puts you in a pretty solid position. You, there is the threat of implosion coming down here on turn four from your opponent, which if it rolls three, puts you in a pretty problematic situation. Yeah, but overall, the Feral Spirit actually counters the minions on right. the board, so it yeah. puts him in a, an yeah. okay position anyway. Yeah, Implosion is definitely one of, the, one of the other good cards in this matchup as well, because Shaman doesn't really like dealing with minions, or at least multiple minions on the board. There's not really, or normally, or, uh, any AoE in the deck. We've seen past iterations from like Elemental Destruction and stuff, but we're pretty confident this deck isn't running that, so really difficult to deal with these Creepers, for example, as well, similar to the Implosion. Yeah, and I love uh, Powder's sequencing here. That, that Finley Murgleton is often a card that you will play on turn one, but Powder's recognized that with this handful of minions, he has stuff to do for so many yeah. turns that refreshing his hero power isn't going to achieve anything. So I'm sure we'll see that Finley come down soon as he starts to run out of cards, and he actually needs to use that hero power to fill in. Yeah, his especially for the opening from Prokovac, the 1-3 body wasn't going to do anything right. either, right? You know, yeah. if you're against maybe more like a uh, face hunter, then like, you know, the 1-3 can actually do some work. But with that opening for that Prokovac, 
Krovac did with the Void Walker and uh, and the Flame Imp, it's going to do nothing. Well, Krovac had a nice pickup with Abyss of Surgeon to be able to deal with the Feral Spirits, um, but the knife landed on the set Spirit, so that didn't work out for him. Horse Rider, a great draw here though, just to deal with that Knife Juggler. You don't want to waste your time kind of throwing damage at a Knife Juggler in terms of burn from your hand, so much better to do it with a Horse Rider that actually leaves a persistent present on the board. But Face Juggler living, living up to his name, I'm sure once uh, Knife Juggler is potentially nerfed from the format, there will be a lot of people getting very tilted by Flame Juggler as more and more decks start to play I it. I think it worked great. One damage to Face. Sure. Like, you want that as the Face Shaman. Was there a better target, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the 2 1 was a better target in that situation. Yeah, but yeah. then like, you had three worse targets in a way. Right. That's kind of an interesting life tap from Pogrovac, actually, because he's on 16 and he knows Powder has held one card in his hand all game. Yeah, very that good. Could, that could be a Crackle or a Lava Burst. Or right? a Doomhammer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like, and that's kind of like a, a little bit ballsy as well. He did go into it at the end of Argus, which is going to be really good next turn. Mm -hmm. I think oh, it was because just very scary. It's the Demon Handlock, so what he wants to get is something like Mulganis, like he has already the Void Caller and Void Terror, which he knows he will be doing on the next turn. So tapping into a possible another demon that you can get with Void Terror was uh, quite a run. Oh, and yeah. speaking of Mulganis, there he yep. is. Void Terror comes down, immediate Mulganis generated onto the Look board. Look at those imps. Immunity and a board of 3-3 three, three imps right now. Powder leans back in his chair, not happy to see that. Great trades on the board now for the imps, and he is going to have to find some way of dealing with that Mulganis, but he may just de decide here that, yeah, all right, that's yeah, good enough. Yeah. I'm out. We'll play the next game. Especially there's no way, actually. Well, there's no way that we can see, but overall in the deck, like what can you even do? Like yeah. second air shock, maybe to right. silence it, but usually people play only one in their decks. Yeah. So that tap, that tap basically gave him a chance to get yeah. Alganis uh, from the top and uh, the, one of the most strongest plays in the Demon Zoo. Yeah, it's kind of crazy as well because if he didn't draw into that Malganis that turn, then I, he was still in a bit of a dire position. Even though he had the one ones and he had the board, there was a lot of damage that Bear Powder could have been drawn. So really good play in there. It worked out for Crowback, so he's fighting back now. I think there was a lot of really good utility cards left in his deck in general. As you pointed out, the demons for that Void Caller that he had, but we saw the card he drew immediately when he life tapped was Defender of Argus, yeah. which is an excellent card as well. Uh, Lothair probably in there as well is That's another true. card that is pretty excellent in that situation. So the expected value of your life tap there is that you're going to get much closer to a card that can end up winning you the game. Absolutely. All right, so finally the Shaman is dead after a 5-0 <laughs> start for yep. Powder. 5-1 now, and he needs to switch the deck, and this will be the Control Warrior. Yeah, very much looking like Control Warrior. Death Lord, excellent early card against Zoo, can slow them down quite significantly unless uh, you see Power Overwhelming come out from the other side. But uh, Brawl will be another consideration here. I think Powder will try and open up as many Mulligan slots as he can here to hit a weapon, but Brawl is something you definitely consider keeping against Confirmed Zoo. And uh, six drop, seven drop, not what he would have wanted to see there. Yeah, also yeah. Death Lord might be quite tricky because th this is a Demon Zoo, so there's a couple of really good demons that you can just bring out uh, out of nowhere. Right. And uh, but the, you need power overwhelming to deal with Death Lord to begin with. Yeah, especially with the slow start from uh, from Pokrovac's side as well. You know, if, we, if we'd already seen, say, a couple of Flame Imps on the board, then suddenly the Death Lord is a bit more fragile. But not playing his first minion until turn two, that Death Lord is going to be able to get a lot of work done. It's actually interesting because he didn't get any good card from uh, Dark Peddler, but he did draw into power of world right on this turn. Yep, so he's just, I imagine we're just going to see the Death Lord now. It just can tend the 2-2 two -two quite easily. And uh, he, I mean, power of world, I mean, abusive, you know, that's the only thing it really dies to. Or it could get Owled, but if it gets Owled, Powell's probably okay with that, because then he just has a big minion that can trade for quite long into the game. But Grovek does go for the coin into the... Uh, into the Void Caller though, which is really good because even at worst he's getting an Imp Gang Boss or another Void Caller, so right. even the self cycle is going to be pretty nice. Yep, I would expect to see uh, Powder just deal with this here. Um, it, even if the worst case scenario comes out and it is Malganis, there is still that Death Lord in yep. the way for it to deal with. And he's going to get the, the relatively good news that it's only an Imp Gang Boss inside of that Void Caller as of right now. Another question is, do you go for PO this turn or do you just try to develop your board? Like, I don't think you really need to PO yet like you might just attack the, the death lord with go for the uh the four hit on the implosion he'll be fine yeah i mean i don't see too much reason to power overwhelming right now because so you'd leave a one one behind on the board and uh, another minion 
that comes out of the Death Lord. So it's a really good chance that the Death Spite swing from Powder is just too good in that situation. Same problem with Implosion, yeah. really, which is the other answer. You just make the Death Spite swing too powerful. But uh, Powder will be feeling relatively comfortable here because even worst case scenario, if something huge comes out of the um, the Death Lord, he does have Shield Block, Shield Slam combination in hand ready to go. So Yeah, overall, Powder has everything he needs. He has the, the Belcher into Shield Maiden, into Dr. Boom curve and right now he's pretty safe like he's not taking ah, damage okay. oh two as well Whoops. definitely not what he wanted to see yeah i guess his consideration even if he rolled three that means that powder couldn't attack with the death spite without procking his own death lord yeah if that makes sense so um i guess like all things considered maybe the 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 implosion wasn't the worst idea in the world but there's still the potential for this death spite to be extremely juicy holy crap that is that yep, is a, that a is a swing despite. right there, yeah. That's where that goes to face. I, I was just imagining the Malganis pull yeah. with all the imps, and then oh, them baby. to three three, and then you'd just be like, oh, kind of a bad idea. There was a chance for that, absolutely, yeah. yeah. yeah and I, I commented on his mulligan of drawing six drop, seven drop wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but because of the slower nature of this zoo deck, and it's somewhat surprised me that the the big zoo, the boy caller Malganis zoo, is the most popular version that we've really seen in this yeah. tournament. But because it's kind of less consistent early due to all the big cards, it's actually given the warrior time to just make this big hand of, of value cards pretty impactful in the game overall. Yeah, even getting that Sylvanas as well, which is pretty good when there's the Void Caller on board. Yep. Like, it's bring your demons, I want to see them. <laughs> it's kind of interesting as well, because as you mentioned about the Zoo list sort of popping up, not out of nowhere, but, you know, becoming more popular now. Um, interesting how it's led by previous tournaments potentially, because mm. in the last couple of like big tournaments that have happened, there's been a lot of Sea Giant Zoo, and maybe yep. everyone's like, well, everyone's expecting Sea Giant Zoo, teching in things like Big Game Hunter more into decks, um, and then it's like, oh, okay, I'll flick to the Demon Zoo again. It's just really interesting how like yeah. every single tournament hey, affects the next one. Are you bringing Malganis Doctor Boom Zoo as a response to people playing Big Game Hunter? <laughs> no, I don't exactly. think that really makes any sense. No, I just mean like you playing it in like uh, you just people are expecting that list more. Right, so right, sure. Like play into that list and just expect it to yeah, build yeah. in their own deck lists. Yeah. yeah, Zoo particularly just cycles so heavily. We had like a month of just fast Zoo topping out a Doom yeah. card. Then we had a month of Sea Giant Zoo, and now it seems we're going back to Void Call and Zoo, which is kind of an old school list at this point. So. Well, let's just agree that Zoo is a good deck. Yeah, um, no arguments yeah, there. All of the <laughs> Zoos. Yeah, but it is funny. Like people actually changing stuff all the time. Um, maybe they're expecting specific matchups. Maybe they feel like this version is better versus Contra Warrior that's actually getting more and more popular as opposed to Patreon decks. Right, but yeah, I mean, Krovac just in a pretty awkward situation here. Does get a good Argus down, which will make Powder consider things very, very drastically, because from his perspective, he thinks bad things are going to happen whenever he attacks either of these taunts. Either a 4-4 gets summoned or unknown question mark yeah. demon gets summoned from the Void Caller, but he's going to go through his options here. He'll get the good news if he does commit to the Void Caller attack, that there is no demon inside. Yeah, Using I, the Execute is... Yeah, this uh, is really good. What's yeah. good about the Execute is he can still shield block armor up shield right. slam for seven. Yep. Um, so him, he actually. can pretty much kill anything that comes... Like, he can kill the Marganis, which yep. is all he's really scared about. Yep. Or even the Doom Guard if it comes out. Oh, this is just perfect. Shield Maiden shield slam into the 4-4, and then he still has the bomb. And Dr. Boom ready. So what can Pokrovic even do here? Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if he commits with the bomb to try and clear out the Defender of Argus here to sweep the ball, but he just values the one face damage. Relatively unlikely that he gets the clear on the Argus, and the Argus just doesn't pose enough of a threat. Even with a buff, it can only take out one of these big minions. He still keeps a second one in play. Yeah, and the thing is, Powder's not even remotely close to being pressured on health. Nope. Not even close. He's on 34 health. Like, what, the, leaving a 2-3 up's fine. So like, even though it's been buffed by Argus, get a little bit more work done, but they're going to have to get a lot of work done if they want to challenge this warrior. All right, so Dr. Boom has been corrupted, which means unless he finds lethal here, he's just going to try and take a, the, the most damage possible on the Boom and then push through. A couple of shield blocks in a row, just in case he needed to be any more comfortable in this match than he is hey, right uh, now. he might have an Owl in this deck. He can uh, draw into the Owl and silence off the corruption. Possibly. Uh, unlikely, though. Unlikely, but, you know. Stan Sivka could probably play an Owl, yeah. but he didn't make it to top 16, so... Yeah, but Powder is just going to go ahead, use the boom to trade, so, uh, except that he loses it off the board here, just play a couple of new minions straight away. Implosion comes down on the Death Lord, just not going to be good enough. Does get the Abusive Sergeant, can yeah. push through. Malganis? Maybe if exactly Malganis happens here, we have a game. Oh, that oh, is it's... not exactly Malganis. Yeah, so uh, how much damage is it? Seven damage? 
Seven damage, but more importantly, he just has the revenge yeah. here, which is an insane card. This is the one turn where Pokrovac might be feeling like, okay, if I can start snowballing this board, I'm in good shape, but revenge is going to crush his hopes and dreams. And also right good now. because it's not even close to procking the extra effect of revenge for, oh. him for three. Uh, sure, let's just win the game with the yeah. Grom top deck. That works too. Yep, that works definitely. So Powder is going to be the first person to advance the top eight to tomorrow with uh, amazing performance, 3-0 with Shaman versus two beers, and now uh, two, uh, two wins with Shaman and one win with Contra Warrior. Pokrovac is not eliminated though, he just goes down to the lower bracket, and he, he still has a chance to join Powder. Yeah, he will wait for the other person to progress all the way through the lower side of the bracket, and he'll have his second chance in possibly the other stream game that we watch. Absolutely. Yeah, really strong performance in Powder, and um, when Powder's feeling good about a tournament, he actually just plays a lot better as well. I think he's very affected about you know, his actual state at that time. So uh, yeah. really good to see him progress. On the other hand, like Powder has seen a lot of top eights. Like, yeah. Oh I, yeah. I always, there is a top eight, there is Powder in it, <laughs> but uh, he never won a tournament. Like he's the final boss. Even at, uh, at PGL, I think he, he lost in uh, top four. Right. So like this year already, he had some good performance, but then can he do it? Can he make it? I think like last Insomnia in December, I was talking to Powder specifically and all the SK guys, and Powder just went on a rant how many tournaments he were and he was in the final. Yeah. And uh, it's just, I think eight tournaments. Right. And he always has, he has a story for each one of them, just telling like he just drew this and that, and that's why I lost. Like this was a ridiculous situation. Like even at uh, I think GigaCon in Norway, mm -hmm. he was in the final, mm -hmm. if I remember. Yeah, correctly. Spo. It was yeah. Spo wasn't and Spo it? won it. Yeah. So uh, there's so many stories about Powder. I, I want to see Powder win. I think he's just like the European equivalent of Chucky, right? Like North America knows Chucky as the guy with the second place yeah. curse. And over here we have Powder. They're just these guys that, you know, in Hearthstone, in card games in general, consistency is, you know, the, the general arbiter of being a good player. So the fact that he consistently gets top eights, top fours, top twos, it makes him one of the strongest players in the world, but from an outside perspective and just from a personal perspective, you don't feel like you've achieved anything unless you've won the tournament. Absolutely, and it's also interesting what kinds of decks he's bringing to the tournament because uh, in the first year when we started to, to, know, uh, to learn about Powder, he was mostly playing control decks like Freeze Mage, Control Warrior, but then he started changing his style and playing everything. So I was talking to Thais at, uh, at the PGL tournament as well, and he's like, Powder is really dangerous because you never know what he can bring to the tournament. He can bring anything. He can play any lineup whatever he plays. And even here, we, you could see that he was playing Aggressive Shaman and Contra Warrior, two polar opposites. Yeah, very much so. And I'm really interested in that SK um, Aggro Shaman list. Aggro Shaman is a list that I've messed around with, you know, played probably 15 or 20 different builds of it at this point. Gilblin Stalker, not something I've got as far as trying, but makes a ton of sense to me just as that kind of delayed charge effect. And you can make sure it gives you that extra room to play the extra buffs in your deck, maybe work yeah. the Haunted Creeper in there as well for some extra ball control. Like, really excited to, to get home and try out that version of the Absolutely. deck. Absolutely. And what about uh, SK Druid, Raven? Have you seen SK Druid in action? Is it just Druid? No. Oh, hang on, no, it's a uh, Mind Creep player there. It's aggro, right? Right, it's, uh, no, 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 it's, no, it's, it's, it's mid-range Druid, but he has like some extra two drops in there, and then there's a piloted Sky Golem as well. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, he has um, Flame Juggler and Druid of the Sa Druid of the Saber, right, in there. Oh, um, that's why the part of the game I watched, yeah, I thought it, it was aggro. But it's <laughs> not the aggro Fell Reaver deck, because it has Azure Drake and Ancient of Lore as well, and then there's just a piloted Sky Golem. Like, it's just really um, kind of off the wall Druid. guys, come on. Like yeah, good. I would love to see the deck uh, if Powder is playing it because at the moment we don't know. Like he was able to change the decks, yep. and uh, maybe it's just a standard Midrange Druid with double Living Roots, uh, Azure Drake, or maybe something different. Like we've also seen uh, double Ancient of War and Sylvanas uh, Druid in this right. format, yep. played by by Dog. By I Dog, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, guys, this was the the first match uh, of the day. We have seven more to go, and obviously the groups are being played at the very moment. We'll be showing the decider matches where somebody goes to the top eight. But uh, give us some time before we prepare the next match, and uh, we'll be back with more Hearts in action after a couple of minutes.